Welcome to How Become an Appian Desktop Ninja. My name is Wim Sellers and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect at Sauce Labs. This video is part of a series of six videos where we look into what you need to know to become that Appian Desktop Ninja. In this video we will focus on how to connect to a cloud provider like Sauce Labs. We will first start by setting up our environment for testing by explaining how to upload an app which we're going to use with Appium Desktop to our cloud. After that, we will use that app to connect to an emulator, simulator and real devices in the Sauce Labs cloud. So let's take a look at what we first need to do. When you go to wiki.saucelabs.com and search for application storage, you will find an article about how to upload your iOS or Android application to the Sauce Labs storage. You can do that in multiple ways. You can, for example, upload it manually by just dragging or dropping the application into the storage. But if you're using a build pipeline where you're building your application for iOS or for Android, you also have the option to automatically push the app to the storage. You can use that with a curl command and you can push it to the US data center or you could even push it to the EU data center. And the only difference will be the endpoint to which you need to push your application. But you also have the option if you want to know which applications are in your application storage to get an overview of all those files. If you scroll a little bit down, you will see a command like this. You can use a curl command. You can also use, for example, Postman, where you just verify or call which apps are in that storage and you will get a JSON blob with all the information about your applications that are stored in the application storage. So for this video, we're going to show you how to manually upload that application for iOS or for Android to the application storage. So let us now go to the Sauce Labs cloud. If you're logged into the Sauce Labs cloud, and it doesn't matter if you're logged into the US data center or if you're logged into the EU data center, you just need to go to live where you open the mobile app page and you will get an overview here of all the applications that you've already uploaded to the cloud. And as you can see here, we already have multiple applications, but I just want to upload the latest version of the application to our Sauce Labs cloud. And that will also be the version that we're going to use during the connection with Appium Desktop. In this case, I want to upload my Android application first. So I click on App Upload, I get this screen, I select Choose File, and I select the Android application. This application will be uploaded now. You see the spinner in a few seconds. The application has been uploaded and it has been added to the screen. And you can already see here, there's a new version added, which is version 2.6. I can even go to the settings here and just see that I uploaded this version less than a minute ago. Now I also want to show you how to upload an iOS application. And we need to be aware for iOS, we've got two different types of applications. The iOS simulator needs to have a specific build and the iOS real device also needs to have its own build. Let's first start with the iOS simulator. You can, when you upload an application, a simulator application to Sauce Labs, you cannot upload the .app file itself. You need to zip it. And when you zip it, you can upload it by clicking on the zip file, select choose, and it will automatically upload the file to the cloud. And as you can already see here now, for Sauce Labs, the iOS application, a second application has been uploaded less than a minute ago. I'm now also going to upload the IPA. This is the application which is meant for real devices. Let's click on it. It will also be uploaded and in a few seconds you will see that we now have three or even four iOS applications in this row. We can also open the settings. We can click on settings and we should now see that we got two versions of 2.7, one which is selected for 
iOS simulators and one is specifically for real devices. We're going to use these applications for Android and for iOS when we're going to connect to SaaS Labs with Appium Desktop. So how can you do that? How can you connect Appium Desktop to SaaS Labs? Let me change my screen a little bit to halfway and also open Appium Desktop. In our previous video, I explained you how to start a new session. But when we're using Appium Desktop, we're not go and we're going to connect to SaaS Labs, we're not going to use the Appium server within Appium Desktop itself, because we're going to connect to a cloud service. And the cloud service, in this case, SaaS Labs, will have the Appium server installed for us. So what we can do is we can start a new session by going to the Appium button, click on new session so we don't have an extra Appium server running on our machine. Like I already mentioned in one of the first videos, the SaaS Labs tab is already available on my machine, but if it's not available on your machine, you can click on select cloud providers, click on the tab. In this case, you already saw it remo being removed. If you click on it again, you will see it will be added. So let's click on done and click on the SaaS Labs tab. We then need to enter some data here. The first data we need to enter here is our SaaS username. And you can get your SaaS username by going to your account. And from your account, you can go to your user settings. And let me show you that one. Click on account and then click on user settings. And if you would click on user settings, you would see your username and then also your SaaS access key. Bo store both fi uh, data uh, files in this application. Then you also need to select your data center. In our case, we uploaded the files, our applications to the EU. So we select the EU as a data center. Then secondly, we also need to start using capabilities. We want to use the capabilities to connect to a SaaS Labs device. And let us first start by using a Android emulator, connecting with or using the Android application we just uploaded. And I already prepared that by setting some capabilities. And let me now use Appium Desktop, implement those capabilities right away through the JSON representation, click on the save button, and we would now see that we have all the capabilities. And just to walk through the capabilities again together with you, we need to provide the device name, which will be a Android Google API emulator. We need to provide the platform name. We need to provide a platform version. We can provide an orientation, it's not mandatory. And we also need to provide the app. And you might wonder how can we then connect it? Well, when we use app and we use storage column file name is, we can use the file name of the application that we just uploaded. There are multiple ways in selecting a file name from the storage. And I would then advise you to go back to the wiki to see which options you have. If you would select the file name itself, it will always select the latest uploaded version of your application that has this name. Then in our case, we also need to provide that app wait activity. We can provide the Appium version and we can also say uh, the reset if it's already installed on it. Like I mentioned, these are some default capabilities. If you want to know more about these capabilities, I would advise you to also look into the Appium documentation. Now that we have the capabilities for Android, let us start a session by clicking on the Start Session button. What it will do, it will now connect to SaaS Labs, start the emulator on the SaaS Labs cloud, and you can already see that we now have one virtual session 
running in our cloud. And to see what is happening, we can click on automated, we can click on test results, and we can already see that there's an unnamed job. And this is the job I just started from Appium Desktop. And with Sauce Labs, you also have the option to watch what is happening. Let me click away this. And now we can already see that it is installing the application. And now Appium Desktop will retrieve the information from the screen with the source. And we can now do and inspect all, all elements that we want to do. But as you can see here, and I maybe also mentioned it in the previous videos, if you want to do some scrolling here, for example, you don't have an application now where you could directly interact with. You have some options already in Appium Desktop, and we will dive into some more options uh, um, in the next video. But in this case, you also have the option here, swipe by coordinates. So if I want to swipe to the bottom of this screen, I can select this, I can put my button here, then select an endpoint, which will be here. And as you can see in the video on the left, it is now swiping from uh, the top to the bottom. But we also have something extra. With emulators and simulators, you can also take over control. That means you can also interact with that emulator or interact with that simulator in the Sauce Labs cloud. Let me go to the session. And as you can see here, we already have a blue bar, which mentions that you can take over the execution by just clicking in the application. And as you see, we now are in full control of the session. I can now also scroll. You will not see this being reflected in Appian Desktop until you say refresh the source and we have the new source and the new screenshot here. So this is how you can connect an Appium desktop session to Sauce Labs with an Android emulator. Now let's stop this session, save it because I think it might be useful for the future. So let's say Sauce Labs emulator and save this session. As you can see in Sauce Labs itself, we now have the video. We also have all the commands which Appium Desktop has been executed during the session that we were using on Sauce Labs. Now I want to connect an iOS simulator to Sauce Labs and use the application we just uploaded. So let me go back to the test results. This is the unnamed job of the Android emulator. And now start using an iOS simulator. I already prepared the capabilities. So again, I can upload them and mention edit the JSON, upload the data, click on save. And as you can see here, we've got all the capabilities that we need. We can provide an Appium version or it will take the default Appium server version on the Sauce Labs cloud. As you can see here, we also mentioned that we want to use the storage file name from the iOS simulator, which will be the zip file. I can now click on start session and in a few seconds, you will see on the left that a new job will be started. And this new job will start a clean new iOS simulator for you. This will always take a few seconds because like I said, it needs to boot up from the beginning. We can already start looking and see what is happening by clicking on the link. And here we see the machine already booted up, the emulator already booted up, and it's now going to install the web driver agent on the device. And after that, it will install the Sauce Labs sample app, as you can see. Now that it started installing or now it started the application, it also retrieved the information from the application, it will take a screenshot and when the page source is also collected, it will show the here in the overview. It will show the screenshot, it will show the source and it will also show the elements that we want to interact with. For example, the username, we can also 
tap on the username and tapping on the username will bring up the keyboard. It will now create a new screenshot and that screenshot will also contain the keyboard. This is also how you can use an iOS simulator on the SAS Labs Cloud. And in exactly the same way with the Android emulator, if we want, we can take over control by clicking on the session. You see that you're now in full control of that session. You can interact with it and get new source if you click on the refresh button of the SAS, of the Appium desktop session that we're in. For now, I'm going to store the capabilities, close this session and make sure that we can reuse it when we want to connect to a real device in the cloud. And let us start by first saving that session by saying uh, SAS Labs Simulator and click on save. If I want to connect to a real device in the real device cloud of SAS Labs, I need to adjust my capabilities. And I can do that by going, for example, to the SAS Labs Cloud, clicking on, for example, cross browser. Let us just click on mobile app. Let's select the application, click on choose device. And I would have an overview of all the devices that I can use. Let us just use an iPhone XS. So the only thing we need to change here is the device name. But if I want to choose or use a specific device, I can click on the details and the details will have an ID. That ID can be used as the device name and then Appium Desktop will use this specific device. In our case, I'm just going to use the iPhone XS simulator and it will give me back one of the available iOS simulators in the cloud. You can also make it a more precise selection of the device by keeping a platform version. In this case, I don't mind which iPhone XS I want to get, so I'm going to remove the platform version. If you keep that platform version as mentioned, you will get a iPhone XS device with that specific iOS version. We also need to change the application that we're going to use because as mentioned, the IPA that we're going to use is not the same as the zip file. It's not the same file as we're, go as we're using with simulators. So we need to change the file name to the IPA, which we just uploaded and we can start the session. We can click on start session and then it will try to connect to the SAS Labs Real Device Cloud. And as you can already see, it selected the iPhone XS, the first one here, it's now busy. We can go to the test results. We can go to Real Devices. And when you go to Real Devices, and let me hide the menu, you can already see that there is a default Appium test running now. What we can do is we can open that test that is running and see what is happening on the device. Currently in the real devices, you cannot take over control of the session. So in this case, we need to execute all the commands, the gestures that we want to do in Appium Desktop. So if we want to swipe or if we want to do anything else, we need to use the commands, for example, swipe by coordinates. And we will dive into some more details when we are in our next video, where we're going to look at more of the hidden features of Appium Desktop. I'm now going to close this session by clicking on quit session. And I'm also going to save this set of capabilities so we can easily reuse that in the future. So we can say save as, and this will be SAS Labs iOS device. Let's click on save and it has now been saved. Now we can also do exactly the same with the Android real devices. We go to the saved capabilities because I want to reuse my emulator cap capabilities, which I'm going to reuse, ad adjust and store. And then I'm going to connect that 
to the SARS Labs cloud. In this case, I want to connect, for example, to a Samsung, and then we can connect it to, for example, a Galaxy S10. We can say we want to have a specific platform version, but for now, I don't want to have that. Just give me an available Galaxy S10. I can still use the same application because an APK that we use for emulators can also be used for real devices. I can mention that I want to have a specific version of Appium, but I can also ask for the default session, for the default version, and I can now start my session. It will now look for an available Samsung Galaxy S10 in the cloud. And let me go back to SAS Labs, open the menu, go to the test results, go to the real devices test results. And now we should see that there is a new session running on Android 9, the Samsung Galaxy uh, S10, which we selected, has Android 9 installed. We can open this session. Again, we will see if the device is ready and if the application is installed. In this case, it will take a little bit longer because we uh, enabled the instrumentation, the instrumentation on Android where we could even use image injection and then we need to repackage the, the, the application again. That's why the installation is taking a little bit more time. But when that is done, when the application has been instrumented, when the application has been installed on the, on the device, we should see a new screen here on the left where the device is ready and the data is shown on Appium. And as we can see here, it's done. The source is ready, the screenshot is there, and we can use this session. For now, I'm going to close this session because we already walked through all the things you could now do. Closing it, going to save it, and save it as SAS Labs Android uh, Device. Click on save, and in comparison to the previous sessions, we now already have seven saved configurations which we can use in our new sessions if we want to reuse them. Together with the previous videos, we covered some theory and background. Configured an Android emulator and iOS simulator on a local machine. I've shown you how to use Appium Desktop with local connected emulators and simulators, how to connect to different Appium versions, and in this video, I've shown you how to connect to a cloud service, in this case, SAS Labs. In our next video, we're going to look into some hidden features of Appium Desktop, and I think that will be the last part and the last step in becoming that Appian Desktop Ninja. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you in the next one.